No return to an awful lot of talking. All right. So now we can go up here. Boy, that's off limits up there. Try to sneak past me again and all stuff you cope full of chips. I, 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 did, did we not just get permission? All right, I guess we're not allowed to go there just yet. Well, let's go down here then. This reminds me of the Witch Hunter's room in Vermintide 2. I believe this is Dr. Sai's laboratory. A chemical smell really assaults the nose, and there's plenty to assault the eyes in here, too. It looks as though the doctor isn't here. But we're here now, so we may as well do some uh, sightseeing, don't you think? What a seasoned tourist you've become, Mrs. Sato. We could just have a little look around, being careful not to upset any restless souls. Never promised not to touch anything here, so, you know. Touch everything. Look at all the bottles on the shelves in these cabinets. What an assortment of chemicals. These ones here are labeled highly toxic. Uh, that's worrying, because there are also things that look like salt and pepper shakers in here. Oh, yes, and they actually say salt and pepper on them. The doctor probably spends a lot of time in this room, I suppose. Perhaps she has meals here sometime. It's a... Life goes on, even when you're surrounded by death. Table and a set of sharp tools. When you consider each in isolation, it all looks quite innocent. So why is it that when you put them side by side, they seem so horribly disturbing? It might be best not to ponder it too deeply. Seeing the large tome that's open on the desk does make me wonder, though, how can anybody concentrate on bookwork with this acrid odor of chemicals in the air? You'd either have to have a cast iron constitution, or a really terrible sense of smell. Or, you know, you just get used to stuff. Those large jars seem to have pale things floating around inside them. I suppose they're fruit liquors or something, or the pickled umeboshi plums we make back home. Ah, Father had jars like that in his laboratory as well. I expect they're human organs in a preserving solution, probably as examples of some rare medical condition. Susato, there are some things in the world that it's perfectly fine never to know about. Ever. Oh. So, as I said, I'm sure they're fruit liquors or umeboshi, aren't they? Uh, of course. I suppose this is Dr. Syeth's desk. Uh, I would not like to work in a place like this. It's very tidy, though, isn't it, Mr. Naruhoto? Imagine how efficiently she must work. The lighting is poor, which is bad for the eyes, and the chemical smell can't be good for you. Not to mention the skeleton watching over you as we work, which is definitely bad for the nerves. Well, yes, those are valid concerns, I suppose. I can just about cope with a one-eyed one Daruma doll watching over me, but that's all. What about two-eyed owl? That looks like an owl and a crow up there. I know, and they haven't even twitched since we came in here. Well, no, they wouldn't have. Your taxidermy mounts, Mr. Naruhoto. Uh, I was afraid you were going to say that. I've been trying very hard to tell myself they're just sleeping with their eyes open. Yes, I think perhaps you were wise to put something like your Daruma doll on display in the office instead. Well, look at this. What a magnificent display case. The cherry wood has been polished to a high sheen, and the intricate carving is a joy to behold. Western cabinet makers really are very skilled, aren't they? Do you have nothing to say about the skeleton inside, Mr. Narahoto? Miss Susato. Can't you tell that I'm trying very hard to avoid talking about the terrifying contents of the case? It's how I cope. I'll, I'll be sure to remember that from now on. 
I don't know how I feel about these little asides because, you know, very early on, it doesn't seem to be super well established what a goofy character he's got. It it does mirror the uh, Phoenix Wright games, of course, but I don't know. Like some of the some of the uh, little interludes and asides here don't really. I don't know, they, they seem kind of out of character just a little bit, but maybe not, I don't know, whatever. Um, there is nothing here. There, there's, there's nothing here? Okay. Apparently, there's one very specific thing I better bring the mouse out here. This is different. Look at this big, thick book here. That appears to be an accounting ledger. It's a record of the forensic investigation team's spending, I think. Oh? What is it? It's clear that the team purchases various equipment and supplies on a monthly basis, but... Well, one entry seems rather strange. Really? In what way? They're buying 500 scalpels every month. Fi 500? They must be working really hard on dissecting corpses. I don't know. Judicial autopsies are only carried out in certain special circumstances. And scalpel blades can be sharpened, too. It... it does seem a bit strange, you're right. 500 scalpels a month. What could they possibly be using all of them for? What are you doing? Uh, sorry, we uh, had something we wanted to ask you, but you weren't here, so... So you thought you'd snoop around. That's acceptable to you people from the East, is it? Well, what do you want? Are you a vampire? Uh, Lord Strongheart told us, you see, uh, that it was you who examined the victim's body. Uh, Mr. Asman's body, I mean. Also, you're apparently the one that's holding me up from going back to the stage and looking around. So, we came to ask you about your findings, on Lord Strongheart's advice. Good, good thinking, Susato. Let's keep name-dropping. Very well. If the Lord Chief Justice has given his consent, I'll tell you what our investigation revealed. But when we're done, you must leave immediately. So, you want to know what the Forensic Investigation Team determined from its examination of the scene? The victim, Mr. Odi Asman, who disappeared from the experimentation stage amid an explosion, and the Mr. Asman who appeared moments later partway up the Crystal Tower, were without question one and the same person. That is the team's conclusion. But, but that can't be right. If it was an elaborate trick, we can only speculate about how it was carried out. Let's see. If two people who looked very similar to each other were involved, they could have made it appear as if one single person had switched places, couldn't they? Yes, yes, something elaborate like a trapdoor in the stage where one of them falls down into, I don't know, a box full of water, and then... and then... drowns thereby requiring a new one to take his place. But how? Perhaps some duplicating contraption. I don't know, I only saw that movie once. <sighs> Very true, but sadly, in this instance, that was not the case. The man who disappeared and the man who subsequently reappeared were the same person. The fingerprints at the scene make that quite evident. Ah, fingerprints. They're not yet officially recognized as forensic evidence in the British justice system, but one day they will be used as an investigative aid as a matter of course. Why? But that would mean that the instantaneous kinesis actually took place. So where does that leave us? My team was tasked with investigating, not drawing conclusions. Instantaneous kinesis is impossible, and yet the body did move from one place to the other. This hasn't cleared anything up at all. It's made the whole thing even more of a mystery.
Mama, what's this? Uh, where did she spring from? And did she just call the doctor Mama? This is a lawyer, dear. No? Um, hello? It's to meet you? Uh, but pleased to meet you. Yes, I'm a defense lawyer. Uh, do you know skin out of Mama? Yes. Can I cut this one up? What? Never seen inside an Eastern person before. I want to know what it looks like. Of course you can't. It's a live specimen, as you can very well see. Hmm, boring. I think I just had a near-death experience. Oh dear, Mr. Naruhodo, you're as pale as a corpse. Then let's leave before I'm mistaken for one. No more, no more, no more questions? No more questions? So, what are you doing at the moment, Doctor? Keeping a close eye on things, no impertinent Easterners think they can look around my office. Are there such impertinent Easterners around? How terrible. Yes, you. She doesn't mince her words, Mrs. Otto. I think perhaps it's time we left. I guess. So now can we go back here? Boy, how many bloody times do I have to tell you? All right. Feel nervous here. I shouldn't let the, 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 the don't do you know? I don't believe we've visited this place for some time. I don't believe we have business that would require us to be there at the moment. Let's do everything we can while investigating. We haven't been here yet, have we? I'm rather excited about it. Okay, fine. it's called a house of horrors. I'd like to turn on my heels and go straight home, via the confectionery. Being scared makes you crave sweets? I can understand that. I was looking forward to a reunion after six months away, but there's no sign of Mr. Sholmes anywhere. It's strange. He should be here investigating the abduction of the waxwork, or working his part-time job. Oh well, I suppose we'll just have to come back again later. Okay, I guess the game is telling me he's not here. Uh, maybe. Ah uh, yes, the heavy curtains in the middle of the House of Horrors. Uh, whatever's on the other side of them, you just know it's going to be terrifying, don't you? The sign says it's the Madame Tuspel's special exhibit. It seems you have to pay extra to go inside. I know, can you believe that? Pay more money, as if we weren't as if we haven't been scared enough already. It's not my doing, Mr. Naruhodo. Oh, what a horrifying scene! A murderer caught in the grisly act! And now, and in case you were wondering, it's the one with the big knife that's supposed to be the killer. I don't think anybody would be in any doubt about that, surely. And did you know that according to the description, the bathtub at the back has no particular significance? What? Really? I would have thought it was meant to show that the killer also worked in a bathhouse peddling criminal wares. Aha. Uh -huh. We have a new theory. Do we? Please do not touch the statues. Uh, M. The keys for this are really, really weird. This one's posture reveals his weakness. Sorry? The killer's stance leaves him wide open to attack. I'm quite sure I could see him off. With a Susato takedown, then a Susato squash, and finally a Susato smash. Right. And if that doesn't render the culprit unconscious, a Susato slam would finish him. Uh, Susato slam, please don't demonstrate that. 
Oh, I'm sorry, it's rather hard to explain. Here, let me show you. <laughs> Leave yourself open slightly and I'll demonstrate. Absolutely not. That old policeman isn't here now, obviously. I still can't believe he just happened to be on the jury, though. I've understood that London has a population of six million people, and yet, you do seem to run into the same people disproportionately often, don't you? Okay. So not here. Not here. I guess here. Criminy. What's he doing? He's... oh my! The whole wall of the cell is covered in mathematical equations. And he's still writing more now. Uh, Professor, sorry to interrupt. Oh, uh, Mr. Naruhuda. And who is this young lady? My name is Susato Mikotopa. I'm Mr. Naruhuda's judicial assistant. It's a pleasure to meet you, Professor. Oh, if only, if only I'd met a refined young woman like you sooner. None of this would have happened. No, that's not logical. That makes no sense at all. Here, I'm, I'm sorry if my presence here upsets you. I owe you an apology too, Professor. I didn't manage to deliver what I promised you I would I, in court this morning. Oh, no, 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 no. The whole thing, the whole miserable affair... It all happened because I've been such a complete and utter clot. Um, Professor Hairbrain. What have you been working on in your cell? Oh, uh, you, um, you mean that? Oh dear, how embarrassing. I, I was suddenly struck by an idea, you see, and I simply had to write it down. The wall was all I had at hand. Where'd you get the chalk? Oh, is it some new hypothesis? Something to surpass super high voltage instantaneous kinesis, maybe. Ah, no, actually. This is my autobiography. Your autobiography. How I was diddled and fiddled by Albert Hairbrain. That is a. That is quite the title for a book while you're in prison. I've found I can represent my odd fortunes with only odd numbers in an ambitious set of simultaneous equations. Really. I'm going to have to pay back all the loans I took for the Kinesis machine, you see. So, it's going to be a new serial publication from next month. Part 1, An Odd Birth and Odd Upbringing. Can't beat the man's optimism, that's for sure. I see. Well, uh, for now, would you mind if we talked a little more about the case? Oh, yes, yes, of course. I've been working through the numbers. I was diddled. I was fiddled by the pair of them. By Asman, and by that aloof engineer, Trevor. We're not going to have to sit through an explanation of all these equations, are we? Go on? Okay, here we go. This morning's trial. Everything I believed in has been turned on its head. My research, my Mr. Asman, the kinesis machine, my hypothesis even. I'm sorry it's come to this. There was really no other way. No, it's not your fault. I want to produce, I want to, d to protect my work, but in the end, it was nothing worth protecting. It was never my intention to deceive anyone. I didn't want to trick the public. No, well, of course you didn't. But in court this morning, I realized something. Oh. If you've done something wrong without knowing it, You've still done something wrong. Uh, logically, it makes no difference if you are aware of it or not. Ignorance is a poor excuse. The blame still lies with me. No professor. He believed in me this morning, you know. Eric did. He believed in my hypothesis. Well, I think that was just a necessary factor in the prosecution establishing its case. No, no, Beric wouldn't do something like that. I'm sure he genuinely believed it. 
I think I understand now why it was that he decided to take on the prosecution in my trial. I mean... Go on. After the terrible accident happened, nobody would believe in my hypothesis anymore. Not the police, not the prosecution service, not any lawyers even. I feel like I dealt some kind of finishing blow there. So, if any other prosecutor had taken the case, if it was anyone other than Beric, I'm sure the prosecution would have declared my hypothesis a complete and utter nonsense. And in that case, you would have been declared a fraud yourself, Professor. Exactly. Which would have been a fate worse than death for me. But Beric insisted that I was a proper man of science from start to finish. You think that's why he... I know him very well indeed. He's an extremely kind-hearted soul. But that extremely kind-hearted soul spent all morning trying to paint you as a murderer, didn't he? Well, admittedly, that part of the analysis appears to have some flaws in it. And what about the whole Reaper side of things? How does that fit in with the kind-hearted soul idea? Do you think he set out to trick me from the very start? I'm sorry to say that does seem likely, yes. When I first met him, he introduced himself as a wealthy financier. He looked over the paper I'd written and said my work would benefit all humanity and must be pursued. He was so enthused. He was so emphatic. But in reality, he was the mastermind of some vast criminal network, it seems. I, I still can't believe it. As the machine was essentially a set decoration for some stage magic, it probably didn't require a large amount of investment, actually. But the scale of it, it wasn't just some small trick. It was a very elaborate feat of deception. All young scientists are full of hope about their burgeoning ideas, full of zeal. But none of us have any money. We want to do research, but we can't afford it. Many of us take on barely legal part-time work to try to earn just a few measly pennies to carry on. I go through all of that, only to be taken for a complete fool. It's too rotten to believe. It is, I agree. And that's why we have to find those responsible and bring them to justice. Mr. Asman is no more, of course, which leaves only the engineer. Mr. Enoch Drabber. Is he an engineer, or a magician, or a swindler? It was about a year ago when Mr. Asman first brought Trevor to meet me at my laboratory. Uh, since then, I've met him many times to discuss details about the Kinesis machine. But at no point did you have any inkling that he was just an illusionist? Oh, he definitely wasn't just an illusionist. What do you mean? He was a wealth of deep scientific knowledge. There's no question the man's a genuine scientist. It's instantly apparent in conversation. You see. If the wretched man deceived you, Professor, it's unforgivable. We must do everything we can to find him and bring him to justice. Are there no more clues you can give us as to his whereabouts? I'm sorry. We only ever discussed the Kinesis machine, nothing else. Hmm. Although, uh, just once. I did visit his workshop. What workshop? Treba's enormous fabrication laboratory, where he constructed my great machine. Why didn't you mention this before? He knocked Treba's workshop. There's every chance we might find the man there. So you've been to Treba's place at work, then? Yes, just once, you understand. It, it was an enormous place. Plenty of room to construct the Kinesis machine, you see. And where can we find it? We have to go there at once. There's a good chance we'll find Drebber there. Well, yes, definitely. I'm sure. As in, I'm sure you're not going to want to hear this. But I have absolutely no idea where the workshop is at all. I'm so sorry. I was more than half expecting that. You see, I was blindfolded in the carriage the entire way there. He blindfolded you? He wasn't taking any chances then. The place was incredible, the pinnacle of modern engineering. 
Even the oil he used was the very best. A special French machine oil that's impossible to obtain in Britain. French, you'll say. Ah, the indescribable scent of that imported oil. Perfumers across the world should forget their secret formula and use that instead. What do you think, Miss Sato? Eau de machine for your next birthday? I've never used any kind of perfume, Mr. Naruhodo, and I'm not sure I'd like to start with that. I don't suppose you know even part of the workshop's address, Professor? You don't have a business card for Mr. Drepper, for example? The man was clearly very cautious, Mrs. Sato. I'm sure he would... Aha! Yes, I do. He gave me his business card once. It's right here. Look. What? Let me see that. Throw etiquette to the wind, why don't you? Enoch Drepper, engineer. I'm afraid that's all it says. There's no address. No. No, oh, well, I can't say I'm surprised. Still, this could be useful. All right. Well, let's look at it. dark smudge here. I think perhaps it's machine oil. Ah, uh, yes, possibly. Professor Harebrain mentioned something about the oil Mr. Drebber uses, didn't he? He said it was specially imported, very high-quality oil that's impossible to obtain in Britain. Yes, that's right. And more importantly, it's more fragrant than the finest perfume. So excuse me a moment. Oh, it doesn't appear to have any scent at all. Don't worry, I... I expect that's just because there's such a tiny amount on here. Okay. Well, now where do we go? Should I be presenting stuff to people? I mean... Professor Harebrain, what do you make of this? Oh yes, that's just what we need to prove my hypothesis, isn't it? No, it's nothing to do with your hypothesis type this if actually. Then take it away. I don't want to be bothered with anything that doesn't assist my science. Alright, keep your abundant hair on. Alright. Well where do we go now? Is she maybe here now? What if what if what if the oil is actually wax? There doesn't appear to be anybody. Where do we go? I have to look at this one. Alright. Examine the back of Drebber's garden to help Toby. Ah, yes. Have the dog smell it. Have the dog smell the card. Okay, but where's this? Damn, there it is. About this, Gina. Yeah, well, I'm still learning me letters at the moment. I only know A to E, so if it ain't too much bleeding trouble. Uh, actually, Gina, it's the back of the card that's important. Hey, how come? There's just a dirty old smudge on the back, that's all. It turns out that this is a very high quality French machine oil. It has a very particular. Scent, apparently. You don't say. It's ever within. You sure? Don't smell nothing. No, no, we didn't mean that you should smell it. Oh, right. Give me Toby. 
His sense of smell is so good, he can track people over the oceans, can't he? Professor Hairbrain informs us that this oil is unique to Mr. Drepper's workshop. I think he's picked up a scent. So you mean if he follows the scent of this oil, Toby could lead us to that dodgy cove's workshop? That's right. That's exactly what we were hoping. All right, then. We'll give it a go. I'll just borrow that. But wait, when did you... It's a pickpocket. If I can lead everyone up to that Drebber's workshop, I'll be the boss's boss before next week. Oh yes, Gina. I'm sure you'll be promoted. Poor, poor Gregson. Alright, shall we go? Um, Gina. We were actually hoping that we could investigate the scene again. Yeah, alright. If it's round here, you can do what you like. Oh, uh, that's alright, is it? Oh, we're going over this again. I'm gonna be playing with my new friend here. Ah, uh, yes, Toby. The machine that exploded must be at the top of those stairs, I presume. I haven't actually seen it yet. Sorry, you can't go up there. Wait, what the what the fuck do you mean we can't go up there? Actually, we've just recently been to see Lord Strongheart. Hey, you are. You've met him. Last time the boss was called to go and see him, he waited for three hours at the cove's office and came back snibbling. Tragic. Well, Lord Strongheart has given us permission to examine the scene as long as we touch nothing. Oh, yeah. Honestly. You're all right, then. Go ahead. But if it turns out you're lying be the boss who gets it. He'll never eat another chip again in his life. So you're still saying all this is above board, are you? I I'm sure everything will be fine. That really would be tragic. All right then, them's the stairs. Off you go. Oh, thank you, Gina. All right then, Anna. Leave it to me. Sorry. We're gonna go after that dodgy engineer cove right this minute. Oh, but hang on. Someone's supposed to be on guard duty here at all time. I'm afraid we can't help. We need to get on with our investigation as well, Gina. Oh, right. Yeah, I will. Never mind. It ain't gonna be me what gets it in the neck. It'll be the boss. Poor, poor Gregson again. Ready, Toby? Caught later, we'll send have you. Come on then, boy. See you later. I do hope the scent of that oil leads them to the swindler's workshop. Yes, I hope so too. Ideally before the dog swims across the channel to France. How can we go up the damn stairs? These stairs lead to the experimentation stage. Let's go and find out what we can. Only takes half a goddamn hour to get up here. Oh my, so this is the machine that was used to deceive people into thinking instantaneous kinesis had taken place. Yes, that's right. Or rather, it was the machine. It's a little worse for wear at the moment. What extraordinary lengths Professor Hairbrain went to in order to obtain the research grant. Oh, no, no, the professor was tricked as well. He didn't know anything about it. Yes, of course. It is amazing, though, isn't it? The scale of the whole affair is so very British. You're right about that. You never see such a grand deception in Japan, that's for sure. Oh, my God. Oh, look, is that... Lord Van Zeeks? So, I think we're more or less done here, aren't we? Shall we, Mr. Sato? Already? He is the Reaper, remember? We'd do well to keep our distance, I think. 
but we had permission to be here, from the top. We're perfectly well allowed to investigate this machine, as long as we don't touch anything. From the top? You mean Lord Strongheart? Exactly. So we can stay here and stare at this wreckage for as long as we like. She could have been at the center of the explosion here and it wouldn't have bent her steel will. Okay, can we look at the machine? What a terrible explosion it must have been. Even the steel girders have buckled and twisted in the blast. And what they call the birdcage was right there in the middle of it all. Just here. See, that totally looks like a trapdoor to me. But look, Mr. Naruhoto, that metal grill on the floor looks as though it's designed to open. It does, doesn't it? If the floor had opened at the precise moment the explosion occurred, the birdcage could have dropped through and disappeared from sight. I don't think there's any doubt that this was a very elaborate hoax, is there? But now that he's here, we... Although, I don't know, I mean, maybe we can... Oh, isn't it exhilarating? All this different architecture from all corners of the world? It does make you feel a bit like an explorer, doesn't it? I know it's all subjective, but the onion-shaped roofs have rather caught my attention, personally. It is very subjective, isn't it? Japanese buildings with their wooden paper construction have excellent ventilation, and I've realized that British buildings being made from brick and stone are very strong and long-lasting. The more you know about how things are done in other countries, the more you understand your own, I feel. Oh yes, I do agree with you there. But I can't help wondering what an onion does for the roof of the building. I mean, I suppose it's playing on my mind because I don't like the taste of onions. You really oughtn't let your taste in vegetables dictate your taste in roofs, Mr. Naruhoto. I hear that a ride on the Ferris wheel is a favorite romantic outing among young L London couples. I think the romance would be slightly spoiled by the abject terror, personally, but then I'm not a Londoner. Are you a little scared of heights, Mr. Naruhoto? It's not that I'm scared, not at all. It's just that staying on the ground seems so much safer. Well, perhaps I shall have to ask Iris and Mr. Sholmes to accompany me on it in that case. When you put it like that, part of me does want to give it a try. Oh dear, it is complicated for you, isn't it? This wasn't here yesterday. Really? But if I'm not mistaken, it's the cage in which the victim was standing before he was apparently beamed through the air. That's right, the bird cage. According to what Professor Harebrain said in court, it's made of wood. It looks kind of metal to me. Or more precisely, Japanese cypress, I think. And despite having been in an explosion and then falling from a great height, it's relatively unharmed. What wonderfully durable construction, wouldn't you say, Mr. Naruhoto? I'd understood that the forensic investigation team had taken it away yesterday to examine it. I suppose they must have brought it back here when they'd finished their work. Or it's what they found underneath the stage when it fell through the hole. But sadly not with the body inside it. No, that's right. I know we were given strict instructions not to touch anything, but still, it's just too important a piece of evidence to overlook. We might need it for the trial. I'll just put it in my pocket, then. <laughs> Apparently I have... Guy brush three wood pants. Look here, Miss Susato. Oh yes, the wood's cracked and broken a little. I suppose because it fell from such a height? Yes, from the height at which the balloon was flying down into the crystal tower below. A fall of about 30 feet, or 9 meters. Leaving the man inside tragically dead. I'm sure this will be important for later, like, oh no, it landed like this. And, but wait a minute, why did it land like this? I, I, I hate the fact that we can kind of figure this out, and yet we have to go through the whole thing and then prove it at the same time. Okay. Well, well. Uh, least approachable man in the world winner. Ten years in a row.
Be strong, Mr. Naruhodo. Your country and your assistant stand firm behind you. Um, Lord Van Zeeks? What? Um, well, beautiful weather we're having, isn't it? I thought I was making it quite clear that I didn't want to be disturbed. Apparently, you Nipponese are unequipped to read the signs. Now oh, I read them. So, what are you doing here? Entry to this area is prohibited. Ah, uh, well, the thing is... Lord Chief Justice Strongheart granted us permission to investigate, on the condition that we didn't disturb anything. And yet you've managed to disturb me. Ah. Uh, never mind. State your business, then. Come to think of it, there are quite a few things I'd like to ask Lord Van Zeeks about. Not least of which is that awful case, even though it's nothing to do with this. Ask away, Mr. Naruhodo. You won't know unless you try. Sure. I mean, this, this is entirely insensitive. This is actually pertinent. Oh, I just wanted to talk about your dead brother, <laughs> actually. Uh, so... Clint. Was the name of your older brother, I understand, Lord Van Zeeks? You ponies. I always have to be on guard whenever you're around. So you've been investigating me, have you? Oh, no, no, it's not like that. Well, alright, it is a bit like that. My older brother was also a prosecutor. He was the pride of the Van Zeeks family. But tragically... A vicious killer took him from us. Professor, you mean. He he he, what? I is something funny? That's the extent of what you've discovered, is it? I shouldn't be surprised. Sorry, there's more to it then? Backluster work is very much your trademark, isn't it? Ah, uh, you're too kind. Are you going to tar all Nipponese with the same brushy next? So tell me, what's your interest in that historic incident? As it happens, Lord Van Zeeks, there's a rather curious case that's come to our attention. Are you aware of the Madame Tispel's Museum of Waxwork, by any chance? I am, naturally. I believe that since last month I feature in one of the displays there, for public scorn. Of course, the infamous Reaper of the Bailey would have to be exhibited, wouldn't he? Well, a particular waxwork has been stolen from the place, and held for ransom. A particular waxwork? Which... Wait, you mean... Yes, it's the Professor. Mr. Sholmes is investigating the case as we speak. I was unaware of that. He's turned as white as a sheet. Because there's actually a body in it. Enoch Drebber. Uh, actually, <laughs> are the police trying to locate the engineer, Mr. Drebber, already? Surely that goes without saying. And we're very keen to see him found as well. The trouble is, we don't have much to go on aside from the description of the man we heard in court earlier. Which, according to Professor Harebrain, was of a tall, thin gentleman who was straight, who has straight white hair, who wears a black monocle. What if it was not a man, but a woman, who happens to be a forensic doctor? So I was just wondering, I mean, I realize it's probably not possible, but um, I'd very much appreciate any more clues you can give us. Wow, Susato-san really knows how to take the bull by the horns. Fine. Why not? I have a photograph of the man here from an investigation ten years ago. Though it appears he already had the black monocle at the time.
Oh, Gina has it. Gina's got the... the card. Because the card had the symbol that's on his lapel. What? Oh, uh, nothing. I, uh, I was just surprised that you shared that with us. We all need the men's testimony in court tomorrow. Which means we have to do everything we can, we possibly can, to track him down in the short time available. So why wouldn't I show you the photographs? Right, well, and what is it about Lord Van Zeeks? Sometimes I just can't work him out at all. The photograph of Drepper has been entered into the court record. Ah, uh, the file I requested for the trial tomorrow. Thank you. Are you all right? Who is this man, Mr. Naruhoto? Lord Van Zeke's apprentice, apparently. So I'm not the only one. Sato-san can see it, too. Um... Lord Van Zeeks, may we speak with your apprentice for a moment? With him? Why? The ghost. Kazuma-sama. Kazuma. I don't believe it. Your, your posture, your presence, can only be... It's you, isn't it, Kazuma-sama? I felt something strange the very first time I encountered this cloaked figure. As if I knew him somehow. Can it... Can it really be you, Kazuma? Wait! He's lost his memory, just hit him over the head with the sword. That'll bring it back. Late. What's going on here? Have you never looked underneath his mask? What is your interest in my apprentice, exactly? You act as if you know the man or something. Well, um... Since when has he been in your care? I don't recall you having an apprentice before I left Britain six months ago. Lord Strongheart introduced him to me about three months ago now. With instructions to mentor him as a prosecutor. But he didn't tell you why, did he? The man appears to be suffering from amnesia. Oh yes, here we go. Everyone in Japan must suffer from amnesia at some point. It's a very common affliction in anime. He's forgotten every last detail about himself. He, he has amnesia? Tomorrow he will appear in court at my side. What? He used to serve as my judicial assistant on Lord Strongheart's orders. He'll be in court with us? Now then, unless I'm much mistaken, I believe this conversation has run its course. Oh, yes, um, thank you. I definitely saw a reaction there. When Sisato-san called out like that, it really seemed to hit a nerve. When she called out, Kazuma-sama, yes, we were there. Just out of curiosity. His picture isn't in here anymore, so you can't see what color his eyes were. Oh yeah, they're definitely not the same person. Enoch Trevor, 35, a trickster. He seems to be both an engineer and a musician. He constructed the machine. You're all, you've, you'd, you'd already met that masked man, hadn't you, Mr. Naruhodo? Yes, yesterday, in fact. Lord Van Zeeks's office. You don't need that extra S there. I see. And if... If Kazuma-sama really is still alive, it means that Mr. Sholmes lied to us. Bastard. 
I know. We're going to need to speak to him about that. You're going to have to leave now. The forensic investigation team are due to arrive shortly. If they find you here, it will it cause problems. Why? We literally told her we're coming here? What sort of problems? Foreign affairs problems. Well, we could do without that. Alright, we'll be on our way. Let's go, Miss Susato. Of course. Well, I think we've done all the investigating we can here for now. If we could just determine the whereabouts of Mr. Drebber. I'm sure Gina and little Toby won't let us down. Now then, do you think we ought to try to speak with Mr. Sholmes at this point? We have things to discuss, and I'm dying to meet him again after all these months. If we knew where he was. Yes, it's quite possible he might know something useful. You're right. We ought to find him at Madame Tuspel's. He's supposed to be working there as a temporary waxwork exhibit. Yes, Iris told me all about this latest and un latest unusual venture. All right. But I think we'll save the actual investigation interaction talking bit for next time. So I'll see you then.